Pastor Lord God, that the word goes forth on this morning and we shall lift you up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless your name. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that died for our sins and the blood yet covered us this morning, Father God. Father God, we lift up all those that are lost today, Father God. We lift them up, Lord God, that they may hear your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father God, the lost shall be saved. Father God, the broken shall be mended, Lord God. The sick shall be healed in the name of Jesus. The broken hearted will be lifted up. The poor shall be rich, Father God. And we just bless your holy name this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There was our amen.
Hey! 
All right. 
what's going on. Well, when she gets through talking, you find out what's going on.
He went up there and get thawed out, pulled it out of his leg. The, the, the fireman said he only had a matter of minutes. And he would have died, burned up in that truck. A matter of minutes. Hey, the Lord is always on time. You hear me? He's always on time. That man, that Lord held him up six hours to save her son over here just in the nick of time. Don't tell me what God won't do for you. You might think I'm delayed right now. What's going on? Why can't I?
to say, guys. I just have one thing to say. Won't he do it? Uh, that's uh, 
March 17th at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Highland View Apartments. And if you'd like to come out and help us or to donate, please see me. Amen. Praise God. After service, we'd be glad to take your donation. We uh, minister in that way to our seniors. Amen. They're at that apartment complex. You are such a blessing to them. And we thank you so much for uh, helping us out. Uh, in that area. Praise God. We give God all the glory uh, for that. Amen. That concludes our announcements uh, for today. Uh, do we have any first time visitors visiting with us today? Amen. If you're a first time guest visiting with us, please stand. We'd like to recognize you. Amen. So we are all family today. Oh, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We want to put something in your hand. Pastor Pastor Kevin and Pastor Leslie and the entire New Beginnings Church family, we want to welcome you here today to our service. We don't believe that you are here by accident. We believe it was in the will of God for you to be here. Amen. And we invite you to come back at your earliest convenience uh, to worship with us. Uh, we, we usually have a song that we sing to you, but we're not doing that song, so we're just going to welcome you again on behalf of our entire church family. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Also, now we will be uh, welcomed by our music ministry. Let's give them a big hand. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Serve a mighty God. Yes. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. And Isaiah talks about Jesus was acquainted with grief. He carried around every sickness, every disease. That's cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, COVID-19, every anxiety, every depression. Every sorrow, every grief, every pain. He carried them on his body. And hallelujah. By his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. Glory to God. We have the victory through Christ. Somebody say victory. We have the victory. We have the victory through Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for the victory. Somebody tell them thank you this morning. Oh, tell them thank you this morning. Thank you, Father God, that we win in Jesus Christ. In Christ, we win. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Who will stand against the Lord? No one can, and no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, and no
accept that God has more than enough. And that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God of healing. And Lord, we just thank you today, Father, that as we delve into your word, that your word will come alive. And Father, we thank you that your word will feed our spirit. It will renew our mind and heal our physical body. And Father, we thank you for all the people who are here today. Father, we thank you that they got ears to hear what the spirit of grace would say unto them. And Father, we just thank you today that people will continue to experience health and healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And Lord, we just thank you today that we covenant with you in advance to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through the Holy Written Word or through gifts of the Spirit. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. We've been experiencing a whole lot of technical difficulties today. Even in my microphone was not the same. But uh, in spite of it all, we're going to get the word out. Amen. And we do apologize to each and every one of you. Because I believe in doing things in a spirit of excellence. Amen. So we got a lot of things out today. And, you know, we're in our new building. Amen. I said we're in our new building. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, we tested this building out to see what it can handle, etc. But once you get all this stuff going in here, you just never know. Amen. Praise God what's going to happen. So and we do apologize for the technical difficulty that we've been experiencing here even now as I speak. Um, just so that you guys know, uh, all of our renovations, praise God, it's been just cash and carrying. We're getting real close to $100,000 of renovations. As you look around, we're, you know, we're painting, we're putting in a new system. We just put in a new air HVAC system and that, that purifies the air. And we've got multiple units, huge units, those big train units. And so we wouldn't have the, the air purifiers full of all our units uh, so that we can come and worship God in cleanliness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just so that you guys know. And how many know that that costs money? Amen. And you try to put one on your house. Try putting one on this big old building. 26,000 square foot building is very costly. But God has blessed us through you guys because even during the pandemic, you guys continue to give and give. You didn't stop. And we want to encourage you to continue to give as we do all of our renovations, cash and carry. Amen. I don't believe in holding a lot of debt. Amen. Praise God. So we cash and carry. And that's through what? Your tithes and offerings. And that's why tithes and offerings are so very important because that's God's way of prospering his church. Amen. I don't see how guys can teach against it. Hey, you don't have tithes and offerings. You're not going to do anything. Amen. But God prospers his church through the hands of men and women. Amen. So we want to encourage you guys, just continue to give. We still got a lot of things to do. As well, we just put a brand new floor in our nursery. You know, our nursery is not open yet. Nor is it. Amen. Praise God. We took out what was there. They had carpet and all that. It's cute and all that. But you know, sometimes carpet can hold germs and all that other stuff. So we, I just put a brand new floor in there. Amen. Cash and carry. Amen. So we can, we still got some more things to do. And it's going to be cash and carry. Amen. And that's the way God wants it done. God will continue to prosper his church. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm kind of talking a little bit as well. Where, uh, my sound technicians are working with the system here to get everything more clear. I'm just used to everything. Just, oh, Pastor, man, you got to be so. That's just the way it ought to be. If the world can go and do something. You know, you go see a worldly concert, man, they got that stuff on cue, man. I mean, everything. They spend in big dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to make sure everything is done correctly. Well, how much more should the church do things correctly? You know, the Bible says to do it decently and in order. The Word of God goes on to say that God is not the author of confusion. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just... That was my training. Do things right and do it properly. Amen? Amen. So I thought I would just say that before I get started. Amen. Praise God. So forgive us about that. Honey, is there anything else maybe I need to say other than that? that you know, we, man, take this building's looking good and, uh, and, and it, it's just a blessing. 
and we still got some other things to do, and we, we've been clearing out stuff, and honey, I'm just excited. We can do this cash and carry. Now, even though when you do cash and carry, sometimes you deplete your farms, right? Just normal stuff, right? No problem. And that's why we want to encourage you guys to give a little something, as I heard the preacher say, extra. I don't know where you get that word from, because that is not a word. He said, just put a little something extra in there. Why? Because we cash and carry, right? Amen. Because you got to deplete one to pay for the other stuff, right? Okay. Amen. So we just want to encourage you guys just to give a little something extra. Whatever the Lord tell you, amen. You just pray about it and let the Lord lead you, amen. Praise God. All right. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Oftentimes, people, they get just a little perturbed, you know, when you start talking about things like this. I ain't perturbed at all. It takes money to live. Hello, somebody. Somebody talk to me. It takes a little money to live. And, and uh, amen, that's just the way it is. And God has blessed us. We're a very prosperous church, and God has blessed us where we can do all these things, cash and carry. Again, I won't be long before you. Amen. Praise God. Sister Bonnie, thank you for that testimony. Let's give Sister Bonnie a hand clap. Show a little bit more enthusiasm, guys. Let's give her a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you know, the day is going to come. Now, watch this. I'm going to get the sonic boom up in here. Now, y'all don't get jealous. And when they come up in here and blow this place out, y'all going to be up doing your little thing. Uh huh. In church now, though, guys, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, amen. Now, we ought to be equally as excited when we're going to see all corn play, when we're going to see JSU play, and Mississippi State, was it Valley, I believe it is? You know, we get excited about those guys, don't we? Well, how much more should we get excited about Jesus? Amen. For some reason, you know, when it's, when it's a sonic boom, we, oh, man, folk doing all kinds of stuff, for all corn or whichever school, but when you get to church, Hallelujah. Yes, praise the Lord. That's a bunch of bull. I don't believe that. I'm going to get more excited. When it comes to Jesus, I'm geeked up now. I, look, I just aged myself too. Y'all don't use uh, Mariah geeked up. I mean, y'all don't say that word no more being geeked up. Well, you know, I did when I was in school. You know what I mean? I get pumped. When it comes to Jesus, I, I get real radical. I get pumped big. Because, man, we're talking about the all-time champion of love. Come on, we're talking about a doctor who ain't never lost the case. Come on, now. We're talking about Jesus. Y'all yeah, still ain't quite there. Hallelujah. Get on that, man. I'm fired up for Jesus. I'm geeked up to the max. You talking about Jesus? I tell you, I'm geek about that. But I ain't that geek. About them cowboys and uh, the saints, the geek, folk be out there, ain't even got shirts on. We get to church, oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brother. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm super geek. I'm just making up words as I go. Amen. Hey guys, you know we put together this real nice brochure. It's called 30 Days of Prayer, and it starts today. So we want to encourage you to get this 30 Days of Prayer. Everything is just so nice. I told you, I believe in doing things correctly and properly. Amen. And then we got a calendar here that'll break down 30 days starting in March all the way through to April of what we should be praying for, in addition to what you got your own personal prayer needs, amen? So you can pray for the things that you need, but we also want to encourage you. Also, we need to pray for the Ukraine. Yes. Don't forget to add that into what we're doing. And of course, all of us know that Russia has invaded Ukraine, and you know, people are dying, all sorts of things are happening. So we need to lift them up there, not just the body of believers there, but all people. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 You got babies dying, teenagers, yeah. all kinds of folk dying, you know? So we need to pray for them as well. Add that to your prayer list, amen? amen. Not only should we give to more of that effort, I mean, people, I mean, it's a mess there in the Ukraine, you know? But we also, most of all, need to pray, amen? All right, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Amen. Let me get right into what we want to talk about today. We're starting out on prayer. And we're going to call this 
pray first. Pray first. That's, that's going to be our main daddy. Pray first. Not second. Not third. After we done blew it up. I believe we ought to pray. You should have prayed before you went and did something. Amen. You should have prayed before you went and got married. You should have prayed before you went and hooked up with somebody in business. You should have prayed before you bought the house. You should have prayed before you did that. You should have prayed. Pray first. Say that three times. Now, guys, I need some participation. Yeah. Oh, I know we're at church, but th this is a teaching ministry here, okay? So I need you to participate along with me, okay? So, and that way I know that you're with me, okay? So say pray first three times. Pray first, pray first, pray first. That's right, not second. How many times have you, I, I have seen people who were in the hospital and they're near death, right? And, and then the doctor comes in and says, well, we need to call the clergy. Uh, we need to get the preacher in here and you read them the last rites or whatever, call the preacher. Come on now, you should have called him first. Before we got to that point. Oftentimes you hear people say, call the reverend. <laughs> you about to check out. You about to check him out of here. You hear me when that, somebody better call the reverend. You should have called him first. Yes. Not second, not third. Yes. And you know, you about to leave this planet. I mean, you about to meet your maker. Call the reverend. Come back. No, I mean, you should have called him. First. Second. First. Third. First. You should pray first. Are y'all with me? All right. Let's get to you. Second Chronicles chapter 7. So you know where I'm headed. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. This is one of our text scriptures. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, underline my people. Come on now, we're talking about godly folk. We're we talking about the saints. Okay? If my people, which are called by my name, talking about believers here, shall humble themselves and pray. Our subject matter is prayer. Now there's other areas that we can really touch, but we're not. We're talking about prayer. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will you hear from heaven and I will not hear. Then will you hear. How I many of you like to hear from heaven? That's what you mean you want to hear from the Lord, right? How I many of y'all want to hear from the Lord? How I many of you guys need answers from the Lord? Now, I told y'all, y'all going to have to participate now. Come on now, y'all going to have to participate. I need participation here. You need to follow along with me. How many of you want to hear from God? Okay, well, you notice these steps here? They say, if my people which I what? Called by my name, shall do what? Humble themselves. That's something mean become teachable. Have an ear to hear. You know, oftentimes we don't have an ear to hear, do we? Yeah, I understand that. I, I feel that. Yeah, I, this is what I'm going to do. All right. So humble themselves and do what? Pray and see God's face and then turn from their wicked ways. Those ways that don't line up with the word of God. Notice it. Then will you hear from them. So you just got your answer why you ain't hearing from God. That's it. You just got your answer. Why you can't hear from him? I just can't hear from the Lord. I don't know which way to go, Lord. Lord I don't know what to do. That's because you ain't praying. Amen. You haven't prayed yet. And when you don't pray, you will hear from the flesh. F-L-E-S-H. Flesh. You become fleshly. And there's another little spiritual word called carnal. Okay? So you got to pray first. You should pray before you get married, especially nowadays. See, you mess around getting married, and you, you're on the honeymoon, and you look up, and that woman or that man, they start turning around, spitting up green stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't pray. You just jumped in. You just jumped in. Forget all that. I'm praying. Especially nowadays, by the time they get through, 
Now let me be nice. Let me, let me, let me move on. You don't know what you got. You better pray that thing out. It said, then you'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. How many of you know that our land, the United States of America, needs to be healed? Can I get a witness? How many of you know our nation needs to be healed? Well, we just see the prescription there for healing to take place in our nation. Because now you got nation against nation. The Greek word there on the Hebrew is ethnos, which means ethnic group against ethnic group. Or you got nations against nations. Oh, man, you talking about divisive. You talking about division. Boy, our nation is big time divided. Come on now. We all watch the news and we've seen it on the news. Come on. Or you can just see it in your own home or in your community. Division is divided. Well, if you want to hear from God, you, you got to pray. Come on now. Then when you hear from heaven, and I'll forgive your sin, and I'll do what? I'll heal your land, or I'll heal your body. I'll heal your mind. Years ago, and you guys have heard me say this. Oh, my goodness. They said by 2020, now I was saying this back before then. You know, back in 19, whatever, 80, 1990, right? That by the year 2020, this is what the world is saying, that the number one illness known to mankind will be mental. All right. It won't be cardio or heart disease and all that, uh, but the number one illness will be mental. And I mean, oh, that has come to pass. They are now building mental institutions all over America, everywhere. Because that's one of the main issues in this world right now is mental stuff. That's why we got so many people committing suicide now. Mental. You know, so, but notice there, if you pray, he said, I'll forgive your sin, and I'll do what? I'll heal your land. Now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and that my eyes and my heart shall be there, how often? Perpetually. Now turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. So all this month, for the next 30 days, we're going to be talking about the prayer. Pray first. And there's so many different areas that we're going to be touching. Today we're just introducing the subject to you. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Another one of our text scriptures. Notice here the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. He says this, praying always. Underline the word always. That's what we mean around the clock. Or every opportunity that you get, you ought to pray. Praying always with what? All prayer. And these are some of the things that we're going to be breaking down, whether it's myself or my wife or Minister Logan or Minister Tim. Uh, we're going to be breaking these things down for you. Praying always with all prayer. In other words, there are many different kinds of prayer. There are many different kinds of prayer, and what come along with the many different kinds of prayer are different rules that govern those prayers. And so we're going to be talking about these different things, either through myself or the other ministers as well. So praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there into with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. If you think about it, I was just reading somewhere uh, where the great revival is called Charles Finney. Somebody say Charles Finney. Charles Finney. He once said this, that the church's greatest need for today is revival. The church's greatest need for today is revival. For I've even heard uh, some great revivalists today it's just amazing that now you have men and women of God coming, are y'all with me? Coming from out of the country, coming to America to bring about revival. Okay, y'all ain't gonna talk to me, ain't gonna to talk to people, right? Yeah, people are coming to America from other countries to bring about a revival. I thought America was God's land. 
just about. And that we send missionaries and evangelists to the world to do what? Revive them. Now, you got people from Africa, from all over the place coming to America to bring about revival. Because people now think America is sick. Just a thought. I didn't say it. I'm just telling you what they are saying. Mm. In a real, very sense, or in a very real sense, revival is a sovereign act of grace of God. Okay? I, I mean, you know, we can pray and pray, and that stirs revival, but really, revival is a sovereign act of grace of God. God's going to bring it about when He wants to. But there are certain things that we can do that can stir that up. Years ago, an author and great evangelist by the name of Dr. A.R. Torrey, Dr. A.R. Torrey, and I've read a book or two of his, he made this statement. I have a theory that I believe to be true, that there is not a church, chapel, or mission uh, that is on earth where you can't have a revival. Provided there is a nucleus of faithful people who will hold on to God until revival comes. I believe I should say that again. Years ago, Dr. A.R. Torrey, a great author and evangelist, he made this statement. I have a theory that I believe to be true. That there is not a church, a chapel, or mission that is on the earth where you cannot experience revival. Provided there is a nucleus of faithful people who will hold on to God until change comes. Whether you know this or not, I believe that there are certain things that we can do to stir up the gifts, plural, and graces, plural, of God. Uh, we can stir up yes. revival. Huh? Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're talking about praying. America needs a revival, guys. 2 Timothy chapter 1. We need a revival. Revival is needed, and we're going to break down that word revival in just a minute. But revival is necessary, and revival is needed. And I believe with all my heart that in these last days, that God's going to pour out the former and the latter rain together, and we're going to see great exploits like we have never seen before. These things are going to happen, and we can have something to do with it. There's a God side, and then there is a man side. There are certain things, and we're going to talk about how to stir it up, and there's certain things that we can do that can stir up revival. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing to the young pastor, Timothy. And he says here in verse 6, he said, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. In other words, we can help to incite, I-N-C-I-T-E, we can help to incite, which simply means to inflame, arouse, and egg on. Which simply means to inflame, arouse, and egg on what? Revivals that come from God. We can help to incite revivals. Yeah. We can stir up revivals. Amen. I said amen. amen. Whenever God's people are really prepared to pray, revival will be the result. It's when we come together and we pray. Yes. Revival will be the result. Are y'all with me? Yes. How many of y'all want to see a, a, another awakening from God? How many want to see another revival? Or do you just want to go to church? Uh, or should I say tax? Come and look pretty, sit there, do nothing, just stare at the preacher, and then he stare at you. We hope a little bit and sing a bunch of songs and flip up over the view. And, come on, guys, there's more than that. We have just finished a teaching on the church. It's more than that. Come in and just sing a Negro spiritual. It's more than that. Man, in this world, 
our nation needs a revival. Things need to change. It might have been like that for grandma, but today is a new day. With every level comes a new devil. Kumbaya ain't making it now. That's not making it no more. It was good for back then, perhaps, but not today. That's not going to make it. But whenever God's people are really prepared, I mean prepared, and we're going to have to be taught. And, and, and that's the problem. We talked about that last week. We're not being taught nothing. You just go to church and you don't know what to do. So you just throw up something. You know, still saying the same prayer we prayed 60 years ago. Now you need to do a little bit more than that now. You gotta, you gotta add some substance to our prayer. You gotta find out who you are in Christ. You gotta learn to walk in the authority of God. What do you mean by authority? You know, you gotta be taught. You'll never go beyond the will of God known. If you don't know, you just don't know. You can't operate in something you don't know. You know, we got to be so careful, we have to get away from just depending on the preacher. The day of the preacher is, is not over, but it, it, the, the anointing is upon the body of Christ. I shouldn't have to, man, the rib don't show up, I'm going to die. Well, you won't die, because I'm going to Disney World this week. I ain't going to be there, I'm sorry, I'm out of time. You got to learn to pray for yourself. But we ain't never been taught that. We don't know how to develop our anointing. We don't know how to spark a revival. I'm talking about, I believe in God. I can't wait till we get the nursery and children's church back up. But these little kids can come and lay hands on you. And you get so healed. These kids are laying hands on you. Some of these kids are already doing it. Why? They've been taught. But they can't do something they've never been taught to do. Yeah, something about prayer. Again, we're just introducing it. Prayer is the power plan of the local church. Prayer is the power plan of the local church. Without prayer, the church is nothing but just another social club. That's it. That's all. Watch this. What do the scriptures say? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. We got too many churches that don't have no power. So we just have in church. But there's no power. Are you with me? That day is over with that. When church is over, what did the Reverend teach about? I don't know, but the choir was good. That's the era I came up in. I don't know what them sisters were fine. Choir was good. But what you learn? I don't know what I learned. I don't know what. He yelling and caring. I don't know what the Reverend said. Them days are about gone. Yeah. And that's why churches stay storefronts. You gotta teach people. That's you gotta train. The whole purpose of a pastor, we just talked about it, is to teach, train, and to develop. If you can't teach, train, and develop, you're not a pastor. You just exhort them. You just yelling and exhorting, screaming and jamming on. You gotta be able to teach and develop people. I ain't getting too many of you now. The late great E.M. Bond. Minister Logan loves E.M. Bond. He, he said this once. He said, God shapes the world by prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, that, that is profound. Yeah. Simple but yet profound. God shapes the world by prayer. There has never been a spiritual awakening in a country uh, without prayer. There's never been a spiritual awakening in a country that it did not begin with prayer. Most of your revivals, go home and Google it for yourself. Take time out, turn that television off. It's not wrong with TV, not wrong with it. But just, I dare you to just Google great revivals. What you want to find out is the great revivals that has taken place was a result of young people. 
It wasn't the old heads like, like myself. This year I'll be 60, so now the kids look at me like an old head. Change don't come with old heads. We pretty much locked in our ways. Yes, yes. And some of y'all, oh, Pastor, I don't know about you. I ain't going to have to What are we talking about in general, guys? In general. It's tough trying to change folk at my age. You can, man, you can. I'm locked in, you know. Revival, change. Whether you, now watch this. Whether you're talking about secular change or spiritual change, most of the time, 90% of the time, it comes from youth. It comes from them college age kids. They bold and they yeah. radical. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all still with me? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Because they bold and radical. You know, the 18, 19, 20, 21, they doing it. I mean, they, they radical. They don't care. They just make things happen. And if you can get a hold of them, if you can get their attention and get them hooked into spiritual matters, you going to see miracles like you ain't never seen. That's why it's important that churches train and develop. That's why it's important that young people are in church. I don't know about y'all, but I grew up in church. I mean, if you didn't, God bless you, but I grew up in church. Oh, man, I was a church mouse. I love me some church, man. And we sat back and just watched those old deacons. And we just watched the mothers of the church and this and that, and I wanted to be just like them. I know we'll forgive when I was a kid, honey. <laughs> oh, man, they were training me to be a junior deacon. And I, I just watched the old deep and deep prayed the same way for the last, as it were, 100 years, you know. And he get up there, and, and so they were training me, you know. I was a young little boy, about 12 years old, about 11, 10, 12 years old. I was up there, and, and I tried to be like deep, deep. We called him deep. And, and you know, you know, they said, now, next Sunday, son, Pastor King, man, he invited me back into the pastor's study. I like to find it. Now they folk are walking in the pastor's study, don't even think nothing about it. That's disrespectful, man. That is, I like to find it. He said, bring Kevin here to the back. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. I like to pee on my face. That's the respect we had for the man of God. And then he began to teach me a few little things, you know. And he said, next week I want you to kick prayer out. Started out here now. So I, I, all, all I knew was what Deacon so and so, Deacon Locker. He said, Deacon, he's passed on now. Deacon Locker. And I heard the Lord and he heard my prayer. I love the Lord and he heard my prayer. I'm just 10, 11 years old. Amen. I understand what the mother words were. I had to, I had to, I was just 10 or 11, so I was trying to rev it up. Oh, I could rev it up now, back then. I was like gargling. I was gargling. And folks screaming and yelling at me. I didn't even know what I was saying. I never forget my pastor taught me something once. I was about years ago, years ago, my old pastor, uh, 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 Elder Brenton, we call him Elder Brenton. And he said, you know, you know, you can just about preach on anything and get, get folk to hooping, jumping and carrying on. And then he taught us a lesson. He started out teaching a lesson, I don't know if it was on Job or somebody. Abraham, uh, he set it up. And, uh, 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 and he said, uh, 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 but then, early Sunday morning, them chillings was cooking in the back. And them ribs. And folk was upshot. He was teaching us preachers, young, upcoming medicine people. That is a shame. And you wonder why young folk don't want to go to your church. That's a shame. He was teaching us a lesson. He said, folk are hooping and screaming just over anything. 
quite a few of them. Let me tell you, they all begin with what? Prayer. To be honest with you, prayer and holy living. I didn't want to throw that in there because some of y'all will get up and leave church right now. Holy living. Oh, Jesus. Lord have mercy. That's right. And they were all birth. I see, I told y'all everybody got quiet when I threw that out there. But I'm just saying, it's through prayer. Mainly prayer. Real prayer. Because there's all kinds of prayer. All right? And we're going to be talking about that in the next 30 days, right? Okay, so what do I mean by our spiritual awakening? And this is what we really ought to be praying for. It means a wake-up call. And so I thought I would break it down to where we can all understand it. A spiritual awakening means what? A wake-up call. It also means a call to attention. I, I, even for me, I'm your pastor. I need a wake-up call. If I need one, you know you need one. Every now and then, you need a wake-up call. You know what a wake-up call is? Now, I'm going to help you all out and make sure I see all of y'all. Have you ever seen this before? Hello? 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 That's what a wake-up call is. Remember, a lot of us, we've been out of church for two years because of the pandemic. So folk have fallen asleep. They don't even want to go to church no more now. And if church go over one hour, I ain't going there no more. If you ain't, hey, Reb, say what you got to say in 45 minutes. If you don't, I'm gone. Find me another church. Come on now. We need to pray for a spiritual awakening. A wake up call to attention, it means to alert something that is sleeping. It means to enlighten, to arouse. Or to shake someone out of a stupor. Yes. So I looked that word up, stupor, to make sure everybody is together. Stupor means lethargy or lethargic. Motionless. Watch this. Numbness. Here's a big word. Coma state. S-T-A-T-E. The body of Christ has fallen into like a coma. We can go to football games, but can't go to church. We can go out to eat, but can't go to church. Come on, we can go to parties and gigs and clubs, folks clubbing, all, just all kinds of stuff going on. That's their prerogative. Okay, I ain't got nothing to say about that, all right? All I'm saying is you can do everything else but come to the house of God. And that's why we need to pray for what? A spiritual awakening. Revival, a spiritual awakening. You can do everything else but worship God. Come on, come on. Are y'all with me? And these are some of the things that we're going to be praying for, guys. Yes. Why? Because, man, without the church of God in the earth, or what we may call the body of Christ, yes. without the body of Christ, or not the church of God, this, this world going straight to hell. It, it will become even more corrupt. You think it's corrupt now, or you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. You wait till the day, watch this, when the rapture take place, yeah. and the body of Christ is taken out of the earth. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't want me to teach this thing. You. No, you don't. No, you don't. When the body of Christ, you know, when that trumpet sound, dead in Christ, or what? They going first. Then we, which are alive and remain. Oh, I can preach now. Preaching, but yes. I'm gonna teach it. We'll be caught up yes. to meet him in there. Yes. And when the church is gone, you ain't seen nothing yet of the level of, 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 of evil that's gonna be in this earth. So you want to be caught up with the first resurrection. <laughs> when that first rapture hit, and Gabriel sound that horn. I'm out of here. 
My wife and I, we didn't told our kids that. I'm not, we gone. God bless you. We're out of here. Y'all can stay out here if you want. But they're, but they're not. Amen. Glory to God. That's why you got to pray over your children. That they all become born again and spirit filled and walking in the things of God. You know, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, it doesn't matter. But let me tell you, when, when the body of Christ is taken out of this earth, when Jesus comes, this earth will continue. But you talking about ATLL and evil, it'll be on such a level that you've never seen in your life. That's when you're getting into the image of the beast and all that. You ain't seen nothing yet. And in fact, I'm going to touch this and then I'm going to run for the border. I'm going to run into the border. I'm quick. Let me tell you, I believe with all my heart. I really do. I could be wrong, but I believe with all my heart that the Antichrist is already in the earth. But he's training and developing. He's growing up. He's training. And my thing is somewhere in Europe. And the Bible teaches that he will go against his natural affection of who he is. I'll let you figure that one out. He will go against that. All right? So we talk about prayer. We need to pray first. Oh, you know what? I like what Billy Graham said to him once. Billy Graham said this. He said, to get nations back on their feet, we must first get down on our knees. The late, great Billy Graham. I think he got to be 100, didn't he? He hit 100 years old and he, he went all the beautiful more. He said, to get nations back on their feet, we must first get down on our knees. Uh, the late, great Sandra, Andrew Murray. <laughs> and, and I know my wife, she's really getting into that history now. I, I love history. The, the late, great man of God, Andrew Murray, said this. Prayer is not a monologue, which means just you, individual. But a dialogue, which means to interchange with someone else. Yeah. I mean, there's two people. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. God's voice is the essential part. Yeah. So not only are you praying and God responding, but what's most important is what God got to say. Yeah. He said, listening to God's voice is the secret yeah. of the assurance that he will listen to mine. Somebody said, can you say that again? I certainly can. Prayer is not a monologue where it's just you doing all the talking. Okay? But it's what? A dialogue. Where there's an interchange with someone else, which is the Lord. God's voice is the most essential part, meaning you want to hear from God. But listening to God's voice is the secret of assurance that he will listen back to you. How many of y'all want God to hear you? Well, you better learn how to hear him. Wow. You think about Russia, we mentioned it, its invasion of the Ukraine. I dare to say outside, outside of sending troops, food and supplies, the church must pray to change the heart of Russia's leaders. It's not just who the head guy is. It's the other folk that's surrounding as well. What do you mean, Pastor? Turn to Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. We would like to set it down. I know we got children in here, so I have to shorten this up. Proverbs 21 and verse 1. It's great, you know, as a humanitarian act, we're sending, what, troops over there and what else? Food, and, right? Supplies, right? I mean, y'all watch the news a little bit. You gotta know what's going on, right? So, well, let me tell you what's more important than all of that. All those things are important. But what's more important is we need to start praying. We need to start praying for the leadership. We need to stop talking so negative and start doing something positive. Well, I didn't get too many amens on that one. 
me get a little water behind that. I ain't getting no amen. I got one or two amens. All we do is talk and die before it. Even though they may be evil, you better get to praying. Because they're still making decisions for us. So ain't no sense of just being evil about the thing all the time. Being negative, we better start praying. Why? Because Proverbs chapter 21. Are y'all there? In verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. We best to get to praying. I don't know about you. I haven't even prayed about that yet. I ain't gonna lie. And dealing with this Russian deal, I haven't even prayed for whoever that dictator is. I ain't done that yet. I'm just praying. I was just praying for the people. I'm gonna just be honest. And <clears throat> I'm just praying for the people, etc. and all that. I haven't even thought. Let me pray for exactly. I wonder if I can get anybody else to. Come on, it's okay to raise your hand, Lord. Have mercy. I ain't praying for that nut. I ain't praying for that man. Well, man, you need to read your Bible more often, you know. And what did the Bible say? That the king's heart is where? The king can also mean president, whoever's in charge. And that even can deal with the United States president. And the Congress and the Senate. Come on now. You got to pray for leaders. Quit talking about them and start praying for them. That God will change the heart of that man. Are you guys with me? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, my time is up. I know we got children in here, so we want to be conscious of that and aware of that. But uh, we do want to encourage you to make sure that you get your brochure, about 30 days of prayer. Amen. And did you guys get something from today's message? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray first. Pray first. Pray first. And because of prayer, Bonnie's son is still alive. That's prayer, prayer, prayer. And whether I'm up teaching or whoever I have up, we all going to be talking about prayer. So there's so many different aspects about prayer. And it's good that we take good notes. I see some of you got no pen. God, I'm so proud of you so that we can continue to grow and develop. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. We're the church. You know, we're not here just to play games that mama and daddy and them brought us here. No, we're here so we can grow and develop and become everything that God wants us to be. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask Minister Logan to come at this time. Amen. Praise God. You know, we love you guys dearly. Oh, my. I tell you, God is so good in me. Let me pray now for those on Facebook as Minister Logan comes. Perhaps there might be someone on Facebook here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know the word of God says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead that thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So Whoever you might be, ma'am, sir, boy, or girl, hey, I would love to pray with you today. Those who are on Facebook right now, hey, I would love to pray with you today. So I'm going to invite you to pray along with me, and everyone else, you can pray along with me as well. Say, so, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today as humble as I know how. Lord, I just heard in your word. You say, Lord, if I confess with my mouth, that Jesus is Lord. And if I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead on the third day, you said, Lord, I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is right now my Lord, Savior, and Master. And I believe that God raised you from the dead on the third day. Come into my life, Lord. Make something wonderful out of my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, there may be someone here. There may be someone here. All heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. 
There may be someone here today that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There may be someone here to say, well, you know what? I'm born again, but I'm not in fellowship. I'm not where I should be with God. Well, there might be somebody else here to say, Pastor, man, I need a church. Or that's just all there is to it. Oh, we don't need to talk about nothing else. I need somewhere where I can grow and develop and become everything that God has called me to become. So you got three invitations today. Number one, for salvation. You never truly accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In fact, if something were to happen to you after you leave here, and God forbid that it should, but if something were to happen to you, you're not sure that you'll make heaven your home. Well, this invitation is for you. And then there might be somebody here to say, well, Pastor, I'm already born again, but I'm not in fellowship. I need to just straighten out a few things. Hey, we've all been there. Everybody in this building, from the pulpit to the parking lot, have, have needed God's forgiveness. So this altar call is for you as well. And then thirdly, some of you just flat out just need a new church. You don't talk about the old church. Listen here, I love my old church. But I had to move on because God was had bigger things for me and, and, and I needed training and I need to be developed. That's all. You don't talk about the old church. God bless them. I love everybody. But the, the time comes, you just need to move on. So this altar calls for you as well. So right now, in the name of Jesus, my heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If that's you today, in need of salvation, in need of rededication, rededicating your life back, or looking for a church home, my heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want you to kind of stretch your hand up right now. Amen. I see that hand there. Is there someone else? Is there somebody else? Just lift your hand up right now. Pastor, that's me. Lord, no, I need Jesus. I need to get back in fellowship. That's me, Pastor. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's time for a new church home. It's just time to move forward. It's a new year. Is there someone? Is there someone? Say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. That's me, Pastor. I wonder if there's someone. Is there someone else? Is there someone? Amen. Is there someone? Is there someone?
probably have your ties and envelopes. If you have not uh, filled those out, go ahead and complete those. It, um, uh, it's a record of what you are giving. Amen. Praise God. And then, um, you know, you can receive credit for your giving. So if you have already completed them, amen, just raise them up. And we are going to pray over them. We are raising them up to our high priest. His name is Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to pray over you. See, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this this afternoon. We thank you for giving seed to souls. And Lord God, as we give, you promised that you would give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosoms. We receive that by faith. And so, Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for angels who are ministering spirits that we release right now by faith and go forth to bring that which we have need of, not just for ourselves, but also for the kingdom. Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And Father, we are not giving out of necessity, but because you love a prompt to do it and chill forgiver, we are giving from our heart. We give you all the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, all in agreement, say amen. 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 Now, at this time, we're going to ask you to follow the direction of our uh, 